Hello everybody, as promised I'm back and I've got everything set up. So let me just go over what we got here. This is my nine by 12 panel and I've got these nice little things that comes with uh, Yugo. Okay, and they really hold the panel well, they do. On this side, I've got the one tray, the one side tray. I got my pallet knife here, my medium, paper towel. And then on this side, the carabiner with my garbage bag. Now down here, I've got the little hook from my tripod with my odorless mineral spirits. On this side, I've got the other tray with my brushes. And then I've got one of the little bands to hold them in and another carabiner here. And this is my clean paper towels bag. Okay, now on the tray, my palette, I've got titanium white, lemon yellow, yellow ochre. And then I've got phthalo blue, and I've got sap green, dioxazine purple, and burnt umber. And like I said, this is the first time I'm using this. So we're gonna do this scene here, kind of. You can see there's a lot of browns and umbers, but there's a lot of green starting to come in. There's a little bit of purple flowers that are hard to see, but I'm gonna put them in the painting and just use my artistic license to set it up. So we're gonna come back here, and then we're gonna get started. And my wife is gonna tell me if I start getting in the way too much and you can't see the uh, panel, she's gonna let me know and then I'll move away. Zoom in. Okay, so first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take a silver brush here and I'm gonna take a little bit of the turpentine, okay? And I'm going to take a little bit of phthalo blue and I'm going to kind of sketch out what we're going to do. Okay. And I like using the blue really diluted. So we got this little land here that's going to be our horizon and it's a slight slope. Okay, like that. Now, the way this works is it's just kind of cool. You got all this land over here. Splatter, splatter. You got all this land over here. It goes all the way down. And then you got another part. This is all water. It's gonna come like this. Okay, and then I'm gonna make this all the way in again. And then the water's gonna come actually like this. This is one of the fun parts about oil painting. When you're sketching it out, you can just rough in anything. Okay, so this is all gonna be water, and the water is gonna go like this. Now, we got a little bit in the back here. It's hard to see, but it's gonna go like this, where we have another body of water, and it actually connects back to our right, which we're not gonna have in this particular painting, maybe in a later one. So there's water in the back. Okay, so we've got a big tree here, and we got a ton of trees on the other side. And this is just putting them in. Okay. So that is basically our sketch. And don't worry about the drips. We're going to take care of that as we go. Okay. First thing I'm going to do, got to get used to this post shot. Um, you're going to see on some other stuff that I do, I got a big half box French easel that I use still, and that's a lot heavier. This is going to be for hiking into places like Starved Rock State Park, where the other one's going to be if it's closer to the car, like when I do um, the forest preserves in uh, Cook County. But I wanted to give this a first test run. So what we're going to do a little bit of our medium. And when you do the medium, you're going to have just, it's hard to see, but just a little bit. You barely want to get the brush wet. You don't want too much medium. Enough to make the paint flow. And then we're going to go into our phthalo blue and our white. It's actually a grayish day. The clouds are coming in and out here and there. So we're just going to make a nice blue, beautiful sky. So I'm not sure how sturdy this is because this is my first time. And I'm going to go a lot more white on my sky. Wow, it goes underneath the little teeth holder really good here. So I like that. Okay. 
Now, I know we're covering up some of our sketch, but it doesn't matter. We know where everything is. And we're not even gonna put clouds in because as you can see in our pictures we'll do at the end, the way it works with this particular painting is there's so many trees, we're gonna just have the trees take up most of the sky. But we're gonna have the blue in the back for the little holes because there's not a lot of foliage right now in some of the big trees. I'm gonna wipe off the brush. I'm not gonna clean it yet. I'm gonna smooth this out big time. So far, that's holding pretty good. I'm putting some nice pressure on here. I think we're gonna call this video the uh, You Go from New Wave um, review and painting, basically painting demo to kill two birds with one stone. I don't know. What do you think? Okay. The next thing now is there's some land coming through here and we're going to hit just a little bit again of our medium. And now we're going to go into yellow ochre. I'm not even cleaning the brush. I still have blue on the brush and it doesn't matter because it's going to be a nice green anyway, but it's going to be a pale green, which this time of year is perfect. And I'm going to have that come straight down to our rear riverbank. Okay. And I'm blending this in. I'm gonna put a little bit more white in here. Okay. There we go. I'm gonna wipe the brush, but I'm not gonna clean it with the odorless mineral spirits. I'm just gonna let it go for right now. And basically, part of the reason is, it doesn't matter how many times you clean your brushes, it's no big deal. But a lot of the colors in nature are so mixed up with each other, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have a lot of things inside. Okay, now, to give the impression a little bit, and if Laura can just turn around over here and follow my hand. Over there, in that back bank, you can see some dead tree parts, you can see some green, you can see a lot of the brown. So what I'm gonna do is come back up here to the canvas. I've got a nice little background here for that. And then I'm gonna start using the palette knife for this area. And I'm gonna do some broken color. You see how that's working? And this is angling. Angling down to the riverbank. Now I'm going to put a little bit of yellow ochre in there. There we go. And I don't want it too thick, but I definitely want the texture. Okay, now I'm going to clean off the blade. Throw that first one in a garbage bag. Next one out not used to this type of thing, so my blade, as I was painting, went right into my purple. So I got a nice messy blade here, which is fine. Not that big a deal. What's nice about oil paint is they're so opaque. They, um, you can go right over it. There we go. Take a little bit of this. Scrape it off, I don't want it too thick. We're gonna be layering over this. We want it to look like it just came, you know, just woke up from winter. We want that look to it. Okay, put the blade down. Take our same dirty brush that we had before. A little more brown. And now I'm gonna feather this. Okay, I'm going real light, just using the tips of the bristles. And this is gonna go right down to the riverbank. Okay, I know that looks sloppy to you right now, and that's fine. It will look better as we go. So the next thing I got is a little flat angle brush, okay? This is gonna put in a lot of our trees now. Use a little bit of medium. I always have a paper towel to dab off if you think you put too much down. Now remember we had a real big tree over here and then we got rid of it. Okay, we're gonna put that puppy right back in now. 
right back in. A little bit here. Okay, now everything over here is trees. So we're just gonna be putting different sized trees and we got a lot of foliage that's gonna be putting on and not all of it's gonna have green leaves. A lot of the foliage I'm gonna tap on here is gonna be browns and some ochres and things like that. And as you notice, I'm not making everything the same size. Okay, that's that one. But again, I'm gonna leave my brush dirty. If you're on a plein air trip and you don't clean your brushes right away, it's not a big deal. You use your odorless mineral spirits when you get back to wherever you're going and the brushes will come back real nice. So if you wanna clean them all the time, that's fine. I used to do that and then I found out that it was really unnecessary. Okay, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna establish the back river with the water. So I'm gonna take the same brush that we've been using I hope that sun that's coming out isn't hurting your view here. I'm going to put that blue right in here. Okay. And we can't see it all from where it starts. We can see there. Okay, so it starts right about there is what I can gather. And then I'm going to go in with more yellow ochre. And there's another tree coming out right here. There we go. A little more yellow ochre. Now, the next thing I want to do is most things in nature are not perfectly straight. They're all over the place. Look at any tree in your backyard. But a riverbank, for the purposes of a painting, at least the far side riverbank, should be as straight as possible. And then when you put your water lines in, it should be as straight as possible. So I'm going to take my phthalo blue, which is the base color I'm using for my water, and I'm going to go freehand as best I can that back riverbank. And this one, there we go. Now it could curve and everything else on the front one, but the back one you really want to um, be straight as possible. Now, there's a decent amount of a ledge. If Laura can come over here and look where that big tree is right there, you get the nice little grassy ledge and a little bit of browns. So that's going to be approximately, and that goes right through. So here's the browns. And this is going to define the rear river. Okay, so there we go with that. And the next river is going to come probably like this now. I gotta change it up. So that's gonna be the rear bank. Now this is all gonna be in. Okay, so I've got this here. And you can see when I add the medium, how nice it flows. Okay, so. We're gonna take this bank out and we're gonna go with a bigger brush. And we're gonna put in this next bit of water. It'll be the medium, white and the phthalo blue. You know, I don't even have to hold this, but I do just out of habit. It really does work well. So far, I'm really impressed with this Hugo Go Shot Box. The problem is, I like it so much, and my wife's not going to let me hear the end of it. 
she's the one that insisted I buy it. I didn't want to spend the money. I mean, it's not ridiculous. The box itself is 175 on Blick's website. They're the best I saw it price-wise. And um, I bought the trays, which are 30 each, so it's not ridiculous, but you know, if you're like us, you need a reason to do it. Our 20 year anniversary was reason enough, at least for my wife. She's real sweet. Okay, so now we're gonna have that bit of water there. The water's gonna go into there. Okay, so now we've got our waterways completely established. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do, take a little brown, yellow ochre, and now I'm gonna establish the bottom. And yes, the blue that was on the brush with the yellow ochre is making a really pretty spring type of green. And I'm putting in more white now just to make it more opaque. And then I'll add a little bit of dark onto it in a bit. But I want it opaque now. I don't want it to where you can see through like watercolors. Okay, so basically that is the gist of our underpainting. All the canvas is now completely um, filled. So now we're gonna have fun with putting everything back on. The only thing I have to do is I misjudged how much brown I needed, so I gotta get some more brown. And my brown I use is uh, Van Dyke brown. And again, I'm using the Windsor & Newton. It's the Griffin Elkid, so this will be dry sometime tomorrow afternoon. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna use the fan brush for this. And all the tops of these trees are still brown, okay? The green is going gradually up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm not even gonna use medium, I'm just gonna use completely dry fan brush into the yellow ochre. I'm sorry, the uh, Van Dyke brown. And I'm just gonna tap in the tops. And I'm just making little branches. And like I said, I'm covering a lot of the sky. That's why we didn't put clouds in. This really wasn't going to be a, uh, a skyscape where you have all kinds of clouds and pretty colors and stuff. All these trees are going to take up a lot of the space. Okay, now there's a lot of brush going right through there, and that's where this comes in. And we're going to do that with a little bit of yellow ochre. So we're going to lighten it up, and we're going to get a little different in value. More yellow ochre. Okay, now, here is the difference. I need another paper towel. Words of wisdom, I've got, I don't know, 20, 30 little uh, double squares of this. So I get this much paper towel and then I fold it over. I've got like at least 30 of these. Use any paint and you're gonna go through a lot of paper towels, oil paint especially. Okay, now is gonna be the first time we're gonna clean off a brush. I want some greens now that I'm gonna be putting in and I want those to be pure colors and not dirty with the brown. So take my brush and wipe it off. Then use my mineral spirits. And then use this and make sure it's all nice and dry. Okay, now we got a perfectly clean brush. Now you can see a lot of, they're not even pale, they're maybe a mid value green. So I'm going to use our sap green, which is a little bit of mineral spirits. I mean, uh, I'm sorry, a little bit of our 
medium. Actually, I need a little bit more medium. You can always tell if you have enough or too much by the way the paint runs. You want just enough to make it sm uh, flow smooth, but not enough to where it has any kind of puddles. Okay, now the sap green is really dark, so we're going to put in some lemon yellow to go with it. And then we're going to start tapping in all the nice little greens that are all over the place in there. And they're going to mix with the blues, and they're going to mix with the greens, and they're going to mix with the yellow ochres. And they're going to look really pretty. Okay, now we were doing this up and down. That's how we get the actual bushes and trees and stuff. Now we're gonna do it this way to get where the grasses are gonna start. We're gonna take that right down to the riverbank. But if you notice, I'm not getting rid of all of these darks in here that we put in before, because right now there's a lot more darks than lights. So we're just putting in some lights for indications of the ground going up to the water. There we go. I'm gonna put a couple of in trees a little higher up. There we go. And that's it for that. Okay, now we're gonna hit the medium side now. Right here in the middle. We're gonna do the horizontal stuff. Take it right up to the river because that's the way it is and remember the river starts about there and you can't see it going to the left only up to there okay now this side over here doesn't have as much green but i want to make it a little pretty so we're going to put some brown in there with the white and we're not going to even clean the brush because it's all going to be a nice beautiful mismatch mitch mash but we're going to tap in some nice green after we get this established and this the brown down. And again, we want to make this rear river bank reasonably straight. We don't want it to be too crooked. The bottom, it doesn't matter. way that's going so far and actually I like the way it's going so far the only thing I got to do is get this a little darker here and I got to be careful I don't hit stuff with my brush so we're gonna use a little more white to keep it opaque right into the Van Dyke brown now we're gonna use more brown there we go that's what I wanted to see I wanted it nice and dark As a matter of fact we're gonna mix some sap green in with it too sun keeps peeking in and out so I really hope it doesn't distort the video at all okay now that we've got all of our areas established the next thing we're gonna do is now we're gonna put in the little details we're gonna put in the little grasses where they go and we're just gonna put in a little bit of watermarks um, water lines okay so once again we'll clean our brush and odorless mineral spirits. I just got the cheap stuff at the hardware store, Ace Hardware, and look how beautiful it cleans the brush in three seconds. Okay. I've gone through three paper towels already, and I'm trying to conserve. So I'm guessing I'm probably gonna do two or three more easily. That's why you see the big bag I carry all the time. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is I want to put nice little stuff here that's going up. If you notice right through here, 
We got all these light things, okay? And basically, it's just dead from last winter. But they're still part of it, and they go up into the greens. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take some white and let it blend in with the browns here. And then that is going to give us our effect. So just a very little bit of um, our medium to make it flow. Tap down. If you notice the way I'm tapping down just to get the bristles done. And then touch and go up. Touch and go up. See how that works? Now I've got a little bit of yellow and green to do the same thing over here. Because those are starting to come up. But it's mixing with the white. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do is we got a little bit of this into our water, which is just fine. Water reflects everything. Now, I understand the water is brown. I personally do not like brown water. So as an artist, you have what they call an artistic license. You can make anything, anything you want. So even though this is brown water, I'm making it blue because to me, water is blue. I got a little purple in here from the sky. I got a little bit of everything because that's what I like to do. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a little bit of straight titanium white with the dirty brush. And it's got a little bit of green and stuff in it. And I'm going to make the water lines. And your water lines need to be horizontal, as flat as you can. And you can tap them in, but that shows rough water. This isn't all that rough. So we're just going to go barely touch. See the way we do that? We're barely touching it, and we're just getting the movement. We're showing movement in the water. Like I said, you could tap in, but that would give the impression that it's a little rougher, and I don't want the rough stuff. Not for this particular one. The back one towards the right is a little rougher, um, so we can do that in another video, and that would justify, but right now it doesn't. Now this, I want to just take a clean brush, smooth it out a little bit. There we go. There we go. Now we have all of that established. So we've got our mid ground and our foreground left that we got to put nice little things in. So what I'm going to do, is I'm going to put some regular grasses in, tap in the brush, and it's going to be a mixture of lemon yellow, yellow ochre, and sap green. And I'm going to vary where I have the dark and light. And I'm going to put some whites in here too. Because the white will show up real nice for contrast. Okay. Same thing here. And you don't want to worry about it overflowing into anywhere. It doesn't matter. This is nature. It's going to be all over the place, like I said. I'm very impressed with this, with this um, pochade box that the boys at uh, New Wave did. It really is nice. Okay, so I'm going to keep the same dirty brush, a little bit of medium to smooth out the paint. Straight sap green plus the dirty brush. Pull up. over here a little bit. There we go. Okay, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some brown, and I'm going to tap in a couple of things here and there. You don't want them all over the place, just a little bit here and there. These are basically gonna be green in different colors eventually, but they're not yet. Still early in spring. I think today's, what, the 11th, I think? 
of April. So there's not a whole lot of green, but there's enough where I had to come out today. We finished grocery shopping and it's like, I couldn't waste this beautiful day. And now we're gonna put some more dirt in here and there. stand back and I think we have a finished painting so if you'd enjoyed this uh, painting please consider subscribing to the channel if you do hit that little uh, bell thingy so you can see every time I upload a video and I hope you get ready to go out and paint outside it's getting beautiful everybody have a great rest of your weekend and goodbye